Hi guys, it's Cash and I'm going to show you how to heal Brackenhide Hollow as a preservation of Ogre. As always, this is not a full guide on every mechanic and trash pack, but I will highlight the pain points for every healer in this dungeon and talk through how preservation of Ogre uses every tool in the kit to deal with it. As always, I will remind you that especially this season, your number one job is to keep everyone alive. The heal checks are crazy and if a team needs your DPS to complete a key, that seems like their problem. Very quickly, for some context, I have my four set, and so this is the talent tree that I run. This will be changing soon as our tree is changing slightly in patch 10.1.5, but for now it's a pretty standard build. I'll update it in the comments uh, when that comes out. Probably the only talent I would change is like this here. I would take some points from Lifeless Mender and put them in Renewing Breath. This is especially helpful when you don't have a good disease to spell in your comp or if lots of nasty bleeds and diseases are not being kicked. This can help counteract that even with the two set. Okay, now let's get into it. The trash packs leading up to the first boss are pretty simple. There are a few tank busters in here, so keep a close eye on your tank. Hunters have an ability called Bone Bolt that leaves a bleed behind, so you can use Cauterizing Flame to cleanse whoever gets that. As a safeguard against all the bleeds that go out, I usually try to keep hots rolling, so I Temporal Anomaly with a Dream Breath, followed by some spot healing reversions. But there are three key abilities to look out for with this trash. The War Scourge casts Hideous Cackle, which fears everyone. Definitely kick this. Decay Speakers are the ones to really keep an eye on here, though, especially when they cast Withering Burst at a player. This is going to be a common theme throughout the whole dungeon, so listen up. This puts a green circle around the player and does damage to anyone in the circle, as well as applying Withering. Withering is a disease that does nature damage and reduces the haste and movement speed. It also reapplies itself every five seconds and it stacks, so people with the Withering Dot need a Dispel or a lot of TLC. Obviously we can't dispel disease, so we're going to have to go in hard with the TLC. Also, if the Rot Chanting Totem that the speaker casts is alive at the same time as a Mystic, this turns their Earth Bolt into a Wither Bolt, and this also applies the Withering Disease. So this can get wildly out of hand if more than one person has Withering on them. It is preventable if casts are being kicked and Decay Speakers and Totems are being focused down. But in the event that Withering is spreading like a disease, <laughs> it is important to know that the damage will ramp up over the next 25 seconds so I would start by smothering them in hots uh, if you have the option start with a dream breath and then echo reversion uh, to proc the golden hour and reverse some of that damage as the damage ramps up you can funnel a spirit bloom into them as well and you can of course use cauterizing flame or the cauldrons to dispel just one person now the first boss Hacklaw's warband has a three bosses with their own abilities and the first thing to note is that there is an aura called prey on the weak which empowers each each boss with a stacking haste buff for every 10% of health missing from each player. So you really want to keep everyone very healthy, which is why I suggest rotating Dream Breath and Spirit Blue, making sure that they're not both on long cooldowns at the same time. And also this is one of those boss encounters where you may want to empower a Dream Breath to rank 3 or rank 4, especially if you're playing catch up with people's health bars. The less health people have, the more damage that the bosses are doing. Now one of the more vicious abilities in this encounter happens about 3 seconds in, and that is Gash frenzy. Gash Tooth shadow steps behind every player, deals massive damage, and applies a Grievous-like bleed, so you need to top everyone up to remove this bleed ASAP. This only happens every minute, but after the first one, Gash Frenzy has a potentially nasty overlap with the Hex Trick Totem, so depending on how fast your DPS kills the totem will determine how much time you have before the second Gash Frenzy. I like to manage it like this. The first one, I use a Stasis, second Gash Frenzy, Emerald Communion, third Stasis, and fourth rewind. The trick here is to build your stasis as soon as the boss is pulled. So I open stasis, actually first I use obsidian scales, then I open my stasis, cast temporal anomaly, fully empower spirit bloom just as the first, maybe even the second person gets hit by gash frenzy, and then I close it out with anything but a dream breath. Remember we are keeping them off the same cooldown, so an emerald blossom or a reversion or a verdant embrace, whatever. 
But the second one you're going to life bind into Emerald Communion. You can do this quickly with a temporal anomaly or manually echo a few people if you can. And I highly recommend pairing this with the Renewing Blaze combo. And then Stasis for the third Gash Frenzy and Rewind for the fourth. Now Rewind on its own might not cut it. So you want to make sure that you are pairing it with a Spirit Bloom or an Empowered Dream Breath. Also once every minute, all three of them will gang up on us. To summarize, the healer gets hexed, the tank is blinded and a fatal charge gets aimed at one of the DPS, which I reckon is a pretty good strategy for a bunch of gnolls. Uh, so what happens is Trick Totem summons a Hex Trick Totem, which turns the healer into a cute little porcupine, while Gash Tooth casts Decayed Senses and blinds the tank, followed by Hacklaw charging off his Savage Charge, which is normally blocked by the tank. Now, before all of this happens, I like to pop Obsidian Scales and put out a Temporal Anomaly Dream Breath on the group, because Trick Totem will still be casting Earth Bolts and they hurt. So the DPS needs to kill the totem to free the healer so we can dispel the tank and then they can block the charge. And then 15 seconds later, we're dealing with the next gash frenzy. So once the tank is dispelled, prepare for the next healing check. Also side note, when the tank has decayed sensors on them, they take 150% more physical damage. So DPS hiding behind the tank before they are dispelled is probably not gonna fly in the higher keys. And believe it or not, there are other abilities that we also need to worry about. Gash tooth costs mark for butchery where he deals huge damage to one person you want to time dilate this person and top them up quickly quickly like reversion echo burned embrace whatever you got other than that you want to kite the blade storm away from other players not into them and interrupt earth bolt whenever you can good luck all right, next you can go to Gutshot or Tree Mouth, depending on your route. The Tree Mouth trash is pretty easy if your tank can control the lashes. They apply a stacking bleed, so make sure that you dispel the tank when their stacks get high. The Elders cast decaying roots, which root someone in place, and you can dispel them, which you actually want to do uh, as soon as possible to make sure that your team doesn't get caught in the stomp or in the slime pools. The Fetid Rut Singer, though, is easily the worst. Actually, that's not true. That's probably one that I hate more, but it's one of the worst non-boss enemies in here. It summons a Decay Totem similar to Tree Mouth, similar to Decay Triarch, uh, that spam casts Withering, which is that stacking disease dot we talked about earlier. So the totem needs to be burned, but we also need to be prepared to deal with the damage just in case. So remember that the damage ramps up over 25 seconds. So you want to keep hots rolling, uh, Temporal Anomaly and Dream Breath, Echo Reversions and spirit bloom even emerald communion if things get really bad so let's get into tree mouth now which is a relatively easy boss he has one unavoidable damage event which is called consume which will require you to single target heal the player i know it's not really our thing uh but just find the player that gets stuck in his mouth hole and top that person up this happens once every minute with the first one being about 25 seconds in when someone gets consumed they also get a one minute vulnerability debuff which means that unless they are a paladin they can't do two consumes in a row and that means that a dps or even yourself will need to rotate in now consumes hit pretty hard for 10 straight seconds so i suggest holding time dilation for the dps that rotates in and just focus on keeping them alive other than that, there's a frontal that follows the tank, there's an avoidable frontal aimed at a random player that also spawns adds, and these adds cast gushing ooze, and that needs to be interrupted. We can displace them, so make sure that you're using your racials and terror of the skies if you spec into that. When they die, they burst, so just keep your distance. So because everything but the consume is avoidable, my strategy is pretty simple. I focus on spot healing the consume target with echoed abilities, echo reversion, echo verdant embrace, a spirit bloom, like a living flame if you have to. I save time dilation for every second consume or whatever it is that DPS has to rotate in. And basically I just hold everything else for the oopsies. And one of the more lethal oopsies on this bus is letting ads get their costs off. And when this happens, you can tip the scale spare bloom or rewind or M more communion. Other than that, you should be safe. Enjoy this one. Now, if you went to Tree Mouth first, which is the route that I usually take, you'll now be coming across the mini boss Stink Breath. He does a whirlwind ability that needs to be avoided and a frontal cord Stink Breath that will disorient you for a few seconds. Now, the only real annoying thing with this guy is that he can disorient the tank and then the next person with the highest threat will take aggro and so you need to try your hardest to keep that person alive 
Honestly, they can be kiting or popping defensives as well though. The trash on the way to Gutshot is primarily beasts like vultures, bears, and hyenas. Vultures cast Screech, which does a big AoE damage, so that definitely needs to be kicked. But the real pain in these packs are the Robbo Stalkers. They have that pesky pack tactics aura that increases damage and reduces cooldowns of the mobs around them. They cast Bone Bolt on random players that hits really, really hard and leaves behind a bleed, as you need to make sure that everyone is topped and you need to focus the player being targeted by the Bone Bolt. The deadliest ability, and this is why this guy is my least favorite though, is called Scented Meat. Similar to Gutshot's Meat Toss, the Stalker throws meat on a random player, which does damage and leaves behind a very fast ticking dot, but also causes all the bees to fixate that player. So make sure you're giving them some TLC, using your racials to knock the beast back to give your teammates some breathing room, and just focus that person. But also, because as if that wasn't enough for one guy, they have a 40 yard frontal called Bone Bolt Volley, which essentially is an AoE Bone Bolt and will leave behind a very nasty bleed on any one hit. You just need to heal through this, Temporal Anomaly, Dream Breath, all your normal AoE healing abilities. Now Gutshot is another relatively easy heal if everyone is avoiding the hyenas. I find that the trickiest part of this boss is that everyone ends up being very spread out, so my number one tip is to keep an eye on where people are and keep an eye out for the fixated people because besides the tank, they're the only ones that should really need healing. Basically, traps spawn on the ground under random players, so positioning is important. Some groups like to drop them near the spawn point so the hyenas run straight into them, others like to drop them around the boss so they are caught as soon as they fixate. When Gutshot summons hyenas, the tank can initially pick them up, but then the boss will cast meat toss at a random player which causes the hyenas to fixate that person. Ideally they would take no damage from the hyenas because you can kite them through the traps, but still take note of who the fixated person is so you can be ready to heal them. That's what a good healer does. If they do get caught by a hyena, they will take massive damage and a bleed called Crippling Bite. So just go ahead and use Cauterizing Flame to dispel that bleed. And finally, Interrupt Master's Call at all costs. This frees the hyenas from the traps, but it also makes them immune to CC, which is a very, very bad time. And now we're in the home stretch, clearing to Decatria. As a healer, your main concerns here are the Slash's Decay Claws, which put a big heal absorb on a player, and Bloody Bite, which is a great river style bleed so use that burst healing to top up the player with the bleed. Rod singers are also in the area so keep an eye out for their withering totems and remember that the damage ramps up over time so start small and increase your healing as the stacks increase otherwise you will run dry before the dots end. And rod hexes put a circle around someone and you need to spread out so you don't spread the contagion. When he casts siphon decay he is siphoning the people with the circle to empower himself so you need to try to be 30 yards away without pulling anything else. That's a little tricky for evokers, so just do what feels best in the moment. Remember your number one job is to not let people die. So in case you can't tell, the theme of this dungeon is disease and rot, and Decatriarch is the embodiment of just that. The healing requirement can vary hugely depending on how quickly the totem is being burned down. So a few things to note, your tank will probably need a little more TLC than usual when they are hit by Decay Strike. This hits them twice and so it applies two healing absorbs to them which you will need to heal through as quickly as possible so you can top them up. The big healing check here is Withered Eruption which happens when Decay String Out casts Decaying Strength. The cast itself removes any withering rot dots from your group, but in turn it buffs the boss's damage by 5% per stack. So just remember that the general damage will ramp up throughout the fight if people are getting the rot dot. So while casting Decayed Strength, everyone in the group gets a green circle around them, and this is Withered Eruption. At the end of the cast, everyone explodes. The size of the circle around each player also increases based on how many Withering Rut stacks each person has. And how do we get Withering Rut stacks, you ask? Well, either by being a slowpoke and standing in the choking rot cloud that uh, spawns and rotates around the room, or by letting, you guessed it, the rot burst totem get casts off. And it's on the tank to position the boss correctly to spawn the rot burst totem behind the rot cloud so DPS can access it easily. Now, 
Decay Strike, which is the healing absorb that goes on your tank, is on a 20 second timer. So I try to save Spirit Bloom for this ability. It really depends on what tank you're running. Sometimes an Echoed Reversion uh, is going to be fine or an Echoed Verdant Embrace, but sometimes a Temporal Anomaly with a Spirit Bloom is going to heal everyone. And if you manually echo your tank, it's gonna get them in the clear super easily. Now it's 40 seconds in and you're experiencing your first bad overlap. The Rock Burst Totem is down, but the boss is casting decaying strength. So everyone needs to spread while still DPSing down the totem and you can't help DPS because you need to prepare for the incoming damage. This overlap will happen every 40 seconds. And what makes this boss really difficult to heal is that the healing check varies so much based on how many withering rot stacks went out. But here's what we can do to make this fight easier. Number one is to DPS down the totem when you can. Only every second totem lines up with the decaying strength, so you can absolutely DPS every other totem to prevent stacks from going out. It's worth noting that the stacks also reduce everyone's damage by 5%, so once one totem gets a cast off, it is likely that the next totem will also get a cast off because the DPS is lower than before. The second thing is to make sure that everyone is topped before decaying strength. If the first totem off decaying strength is killed before getting a cast off, then you will have very little healing to do before the next totem and decaying strength combo comes up. So make sure that everyone is nice and healthy heading into that combo. If the totem starts getting cast off and you're dealing with like two or three stacks per person, you want to be using time dilate on the person with the highest stacks or the lowest health. And I would temporal anomaly and empower rank two or three dream breath. And then after the decaying strength goes off, rewind or emerald communion. It's almost more annoying when only one person gets the rot dot from standing in the rock cloud, uh, because then you just spot healing one person, but you do need to make sure that they are topped up and nice and healthy before the decaying strength goes goes off. Don't ignore them just because it's a one person. So my strategy for this boss is to use a cooldown either before or after decaying strength. If your group is in poor health before the decaying strength, use a cooldown like tip the scales, stasis or emerald communion to top everyone quickly before the cast goes off and we all explode. If you've managed not to get any rot dots and people are healthy, then use a cooldown after the decaying strength. This is also the best time to use rewind or zephyr and always use a defensive for every single decaying strength. You should be able to rotate them pretty easily and have one up every single time. So basically this fight can spiral very quickly out of control. The more casts that the totem gets off, the more difficult the fight becomes. It is a tough fight to heal. So hopefully this has helped and you might be a little more prepared next time. Thank you so much for watching. And yes, I moved house and yes I had COVID and yes I got the legendary evoker last week and I've put out a guide on how to craft it check it out thanks guys